Sarah Adams, aka Mom Uncharted, is an online safety advocate and expert exploring the state of parental public oversharing, child exploitation, and minor security on social media through videos that have been shared by millions. Her work creating awareness and critical thought on these important issues has been featured in prominent media organizations around the globe, including CNN, Fox News, CNET, ABC, Newsfeed, Newsweek, excuse me, and BuzzFeed. Hi, Sarah. Thank you so much for your time today. Hi, thank you for having me. Excited to be here. So today we are going to talk about all things sharenting. And yeah. for those that don't know what that term is, can you tell us what is sharenting and why do you think parents do it? Yeah, so uh, sharenting is a portmanteau of sharing and parenting, and it is basically discussing the way that parents are currently sharing their children in the digital world. So sharing images and information on social media, whether that is, you know, day to day milestones, highs, lows, um, it just encompasses how parents are sharing in this digital world. Okay. And why do you think parents are, are doing this? And I know there's degrees of doing this, right? Yeah. One of the bills <laughs> monetizing it, but why do you think parents do there's, it? I think um, it's different for everybody. I don't know if there is a universal why. Um, I think some people are seeking connection. Some people are seeking community. Some people want to update friends and family. Some people want to make money. <laughs> um, I think sometimes we have created this world since the beginning of social media where sharing feels natural and has been normalized. And we have just kind of kept up with it without sitting to pause and critically think about mm -hmm. it. Um, yeah. why we feel the need to share um, these intimate details and photos about our children online. So there's not a real universal why. Um, it's going to vary from parent to parent. Yeah. Okay. So what are some of the recent concerning trends in sharenting? I know there's a lot of them, but <laughs> you had to... there are, you know, Every week on TikTok, it's something new, um, to, to be frank. But, you know, a few months ago, parents were cracking eggs on their children's heads. Parents are filming their children during very vulnerable moments. For example, tantrums and meltdowns. Um, there have been parents who throw cheese on their newborn faces. There have been, yeah, I know it gets really really strange. Um, parents having their children dance and sing and do skits to inappropriate songs or um, inappropriate sayings. Honestly, like each week it's something, each week it's something different. And then just general oversharing of things that shouldn't be shared. Um, mm -hmm. You know, bathtub photos, potty training photos, states of undress, things like that. So depending on the week, it's going to be different if you ask me. <laughs> Yeah. Oh my gosh. Then there was the one, um, I think it was just a couple of weeks ago where parents were filming, uh, they would put the phone in the bathroom and tell their kids to say yeah. swear words. Yeah. Yes. The, the, the swear word bathroom challenge. That was when parents were set up a camera in the bathroom. Some children knew the camera was there. Some children were being filmed without their knowledge. And the parent would say to them, this is your safe place where you can swear and say whatever you want and um you know no one's gonna see so you know get it all out and then shut the door and the kids lots of them would just go into it and i'm talking i was shocked by some of the language two or three year olds were using behind closed doors absolutely shocked um and then the parent would post it publicly to social media. So they would tell yeah. the kid that this is your private place in which you can say and do whatever with the intent to post on social media. So no surprise, I had some problems with that trend and I spoke out publicly against it. Yeah. Um, so I guess building on that, should kids have consent about what's being posted about them online? And are they qualified to give that consent? Yeah, I do not think children are qualified to give informed consent. Like, there's no way a three, five, eight, ten year old can grasp 
um, what social media is and the vastness and the potential consequences and ramifications. They just can't give informed consent. Now, if you're with a tween or a teenager and you're sharing with friends and family, um, I do think you're getting in that zone where they're going to have social media at some point soon, most likely. So having those conversations about, hey, like, could I post this privately to my friends and grandma and grandpa? Do you like this photo? Is it okay if I say this? Like those conversations should be happening with tweens and teens, most definitely. But can they even give informed consent? I would say, I would say no. Yeah, it's really tricky. I mean, we we really focus in on the brain, the brain science, right? Behind yes. tech. And um, we talk a lot about the prefrontal cortex, which is the part of the brain that uh, helps us make good judgments, right? And also mm -hmm. realize consequences. And that doesn't fully form until you're 25. So exactly. I would tend to agree with you. I mean, I think it's amazing to start having those conversations about consent, especially if you give your kids uh, social media, because those are a uh, value, valuable lesson for them no matter what, right? So, yep. uh, but yeah, I would tend to agree that I'm not sure that they would fully understand the later repercussions or potential embarrassment or anything else, even if it's just something benign. Um, I'm not of sure course. qualified. I, I agree. And I and I do think that in general, with parents having access to cameras all the time, taking lots of photos, I think it's important that parents ask, period. Like I ask my children all the time, can I take a photo of you? Can I take a video? Can I, um, you know, I don't share anything. So I don't, I don't ask that. But get in the habit of asking your kid, period. Can I even take your yeah. photo, right? Like if I am having my photo taken, I would like somebody to ask me permission yep. to take my photo. And I think that's a great way to start modeling behavior around consent yep. for our children by just starting super basic, you know, with your three, four year old, can I take your photo? And if they say no, then no. Yeah. Yeah, and it also models good screen etiquette for later on, which yes. is something that we do not teach enough. We we hand kids these devices at some point and expect them to know how to behave properly with them. So I love this the tip about even asking to take picture. Like that's going to be useful yep. for them later on too when they have their own device. So um, okay, so I would like to ask you about parasocial relationships. So first of all, again, can you define it for those that don't yeah. know? And what does that mean in the context of sharing? So a parasocial relationship is a one-sided relationship, essentially, where one individual invests more, you know, time and interest in the relationship and the other person is essentially unaware that person exists. Mm -hmm. um, we originally saw it a lot with, you know, celebrities, um, you know, fans feeling invested in their favorite celebrities and the celebrity not knowing that that fan exists. And now we see it more with influencers or family vloggers or kid influencers because social media has given um, these fans uh, more access. So it feels like you're more a part of this family or this individual's life because you can see them go about their day or comment, um, possibly receive like a heart from the creator. Um, so it feels like you have a relationship with them, but they don't know you exist. And this can be very problematic as in regards to children because there are adults developing relationships with other people's children feeling entitled to information or images about said child because they follow them online and feel like they know them um, or our family I'm doing quotes if you're watching this, if you're listening to this on audio um, so yeah, it can be problematic if people feel intense relationships to individuals that they actually don't know. Mm -hmm. And are we talking about like predatory behavior or, you know, when you say problematic, that can look like a lot of different things, right? It can look like a lot of different things. Um, yeah, predator, predatory behavior is definitely, you know, top 
of the list because yeah. if there is an individual who is predatory towards children and then feels um, inclined to take that offline and they know based on sharenting practices a lot mm-hmm. about this child or where they go to school or where they live and things like that, that could be a very scary situation. And also um, parasocial relationships that aren't necessarily predatory, but are too much. You know, I've seen people saying like, I haven't seen baby A in two days, like show me baby A, are they okay? And that's a stranger reacting that way towards someone else's child with whom they have no um, direct relationship with. And that's very, to me, uh, uncomfortable as a parent to think that people in general are like waiting to see my child, my baby coming up in grocery stores, knowing their name. That has to be very uncomfortable for children in this, uh, in this world. Yeah. I mean, it sounds like runs the gamut from creepy all the way up to predatory. <laughs> like, yes. Ex- yeah. Yeah. Well, well said. Type of the spectrum. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, okay. So according to a 2021 survey by security.org, 77% of parents do report sharing stories, images, videos of their children online. And we've already discussed there's a spectrum of how yeah, little or much of people sharing. Do it. Yeah. So as a parent, what are your tips? Like what is appropriate and safe to share about your kids? Well, first I will be transparent. I don't share anything about my children on social media publicly or privately. So mm-hmm. That is what I am comfortable with. I'm comfortable with uh, respecting their right to privacy and informed consent and digital safety. And when they eventually hop online, they won't have a digital footprint, a lengthy one for them to uh, attach to them that I created for them. So it's difficult for me to speak on like what is safe and what is appropriate because I feel um, most comfortable not sharing anything. Now, I will speak to the fact that there are some things that uh, law enforcement, online safety experts will say, do not share 100%. Do not share personal, identifiable information, full names, birthdays, schools, addresses, things of that nature. Don't share intimate images, bathtubs, potties, diapers, states of undress, things Mm -hmm. like this. Um, and sadly in this world, in the online world, what is innocent to us as parents is looked at through a different lens of somebody who is predatory towards the child. So we might see an image and think absolutely nothing of it. It's innocent. It's a baby eating some fruit or it's a baby in a bathing suit, but individuals who are predatory on towards children online look at innocent images differently. So, you know, I don't know if I would say like anything is technically safe, especially with the advancements of AI, right? Things seem to be getting uh, scarier by the day. So if parents are looking for my tips, um, if you are really feeling the need to share online with friends and family, keep your account private. Yeah. Well, being mindful of the images and information you share, because your child still might be very embarrassed to find out you were sharing certain images, even amongst trusted friends and family. So you still want to be mindful of what you're sharing and you want to really curate your follower list. So, you know, and trust those individuals, because Mm -hmm. I have seen many people say, well, I only share privately. And then they have like 900 followers. Yeah, and there's like, no way you can know you, 900 you, people. You can, yeah, you can't intimately know 900 people. So those would be my tips on how to keep things safer online. Yeah, yeah that's great. I mean, I was going to add to that. So obviously, private account is just a must, right? If you're going to yes. do this at all. Yeah. Um, and, you know, making sure you know the people is is second. But there are a couple things like, um, like what I do. Uh, you know, I don't have a huge following or anything. I think most people that follow me are my friends anyway, but there's things you can do like, like stories are, are great Mm -hmm. because they'll they'll go away. Right. So anything that I want to share with friends or family uh, about my kids goes on stories. And then you can also filter for close friends. Right. So I've added people only that are my kids, you know, friends, family, people like that. 
Um, so there, there are things like that you can do to even make it a little bit more narrow. Because like you yeah. described, I think, you know, people don't realize, yeah, my account's private, but maybe they, they're not thinking about all the people that are following them, right? Because as we said, of course. probably impossible to know 900 people. Um, so I just, I just don't know that they've thought it through that far, but if you do get to the step of making like a close friends list, then you're being mindful, right? About hands. Yes. yes. Um, and, and we then- also, and I apologize for interrupting. I just want to, before it leaves my thoughts also, and I don't want to like scare and fear monger, but it is important because I get messages all the time about people who were in private and then somebody screenshots a story. Yes or screen records a story yep. and then that ends up somewhere else. So like it is the safer option yeah. to share in private mode with curated lists of friends and family. But like also you just got to be mindful that private stuff also gets out on the internet all the time. Sure. Like you'd have to trust that those people um, yes. are not going to yes. screen record or screenshot or, or anything exactly. like that. Um, and then you mentioned knowing the location. I mean, I'm always surprised at people that are still geotagging their kids. I mm-hmm. mean, even that, even if you're not saying where they go to school, um, you know, just giving any information about their location is, is generally yeah. a big safety no, no. So, um, I yeah, think safety. Yeah. Adding, um, don't do things when you're there, right. If you're going yeah. to share that, like you were at an amusement park or yeah. something like do so after yep. the fact there's a influencer I follow. Um, and a couple of weeks ago, she shared like the actual hotel that her and her family was staying at. And I yeah. just thought like, Whoa, like that is an insane level of trust for somebody with hundreds of thousands of followers on social media. So like, um, I would story after the fact, you don't want people to know your real location. Yeah. I think there's a lot there. Good tips for parents. Um, so I, I think we covered some of the safety considerations, but yeah. What do you think about mental health considerations? I, for kids when parents post about them online. I you've touched on this a little bit, maybe the future embarrassment of the digital footprint, yeah. but what do you think this could potentially be doing to our kids' mental health, Sharon I think I think it could um be a lot. I think there could be an element of trust broken between yeah. the parent and child relationship to find out that certain intimate moments of your life were shared publicly without your knowledge and consent, especially if they were like monetized online via, you know, influencers and family vloggers, Um, an invasion of privacy, feeling like they were constantly kind of surveilled by their parents, you know, everything could be filmed or photographed and put online, like what's that going to feel like Mm -hmm. uh, growing up, Um, potential for bullying down the line with peers finding images or information that could um, be used against the child. As awful as that is, we know bullying is exceptionally prevalent um, today and in this online world. Um, Will there be long-term effects in regard to what they can will it affect their chances at school or to get insured what if a parent is sharing about a child's health journey right yeah. like intimate private medical details would this risk them being able to get insurance hmm. later in life um if they are sharing about um a child's neurodivergencies would this potentially compromise them getting a job later in life if the disability is essentially like not seen to the naked eye right like there's a lot of things parents need to reflect on um and then you know obviously the safety aspect what if these images are being used um in awful ways and a child comes across that later in life yeah. Um, and, and I think you touched on this a little bit, but how do you think sharenting affects that parent-child relationship, right? As they get older, um, you know, you mentioned trust, you know, mm-hmm. I don't know if you had to build on that. Do you think there are other repercussions as the kid grows up and becomes old enough to understand what this all means? 
Yeah, especially for um, kids who are being used as content and their human yeah. life is being used in like these family vlogs and things like that. Um, yeah, it's, I just feel for them. It's going yeah. to be a lot. It's going to be like, was my mom and dad ever seeing me or were they always looking at me through the lens of content, right? Yeah. Like when that relationship um turns from like parent to child to like employer employee and they're monetizing and things like that i think those are uh the children who have a high probability of being the most affected by sharenting are the ones whose human existence is being used as content and their home is now their stage and there's no real boundaries between like um private and public yeah, I've I have heard it recently compared to, you know, maybe like child actors, right? Um, but it's almost a supercharged version of that, right? Um, but child actors are also protected by law. Yes. And yes. you know, I, I don't know, um, I know at least in the States, I've heard of some efforts to protect um uh, kid fluencers, which is my next yep. question, but doesn't it seem um doesn't don't you maybe see some parallels there where again going back to the consent like how much is it this the kid's idea and how much is it the parent's idea right i mean there there are some yeah. parallels there there are definitely uh, parallels between like um you know child stars of film and tv to what we're seeing now and um the biggest difference would be that the child stars we're seeing on the internet right now are not protected under the law or yeah. their um labor Mm -hmm. They're, they have no privacy rights and they have no guarantee for financial compensation. So there are yeah. children online who have been essentially monetized since birth mm -hmm. and they have no rights in regard to the income they are making off those images and videos and brand deals to see anything in a Coogan account at the age of 18, like a child actor. Yeah. would um i think it's also important to note that many of these children in the influencer family vlogging world they're not playing a role this is their human existence this is their one life whereas child actors are playing a role yeah. right and they're going to a set and they're leaving a set and these influencer kids they're like living on set right and they're just trying to navigate this world as an individual while constantly being used as content, maybe being told to do something or be a certain way. And for me, I worry that that really impedes their development as just a kid, as, as a human, right? Mm -hmm. If you're constantly kind of forced to perform your existence. Mm -hmm. So is there any world where it is ethical for parents to monetize their kid's image? Let's say they do give them a portion of it, regardless of the law. Like, is there, do you think there's any situation where it is ethical? Uh, that's a great <laughs> question. Um, because, you know, parents have been monetizing their children's image via, you know, acting and modeling and things like that for some time, right? Yeah. Um, but again, that's role playing. So I think if we are thinking, is it appropriate to monetize your child's human existence and commercialize their childhood to profit off of, I would say no, that mm -hmm. is not ethical. Mm -hmm. And that's morally wrong, in my opinion. Yeah. So what about like kid fluencers? What about, I tried to get data on it. I couldn't find it. I know it's growing the amount of kid fluencers yeah. that are hawking products and things like that. What yeah. do you think about that? Yeah. Um, I don't think, unless there's like, unless they have protections under the laws, yeah. I don't think it should be a thing. I don't yeah. think it should be a thing. I also think it's a massive loophole in these social media platforms to say you can't be online until you're 13 but if you're being exploited by your parents yeah. then go ahead yeah right i think it is dangerous for us as a society to look at the state of tweens and teens right now in regard to their well-being and their mental health um knowing what is happening and allow all these little kids to enter into this world at such long, young ages 
thinking that somehow it's going to be okay. It doesn't seem like it's going to be okay if you're looking at the data now in relation to teen mental health, right? You would you mm-hmm. would think that if a child has been subjected to this um, their whole life, that it will affect their well-being and their mental health at some point. And I do also want to just say, I think it's important to note that some people think there's going to be a massive reckoning when all these kids turn 18 and they're all going to rise up and be like, oh, we were exploited. This is awful. But to your point about the prefrontal cortex and brains not fully developing until you're 25, a lot of people don't reflect on childhood and childhood trauma until a lot later in life, Mm -hmm. you know, late 20s, early 30s. So I think for some of these kids, it's going to be many years before they reflect on their childhood and truly feel like, oh, wow, that wasn't normal. And I was exploited. And wow, right? Yeah, I heard this term cyber trauma recently. I don't know if it's... uh, Oh, no, I haven't heard that one. But that reminded me of that. And I'm so glad you brought up the um, loophole for under 13. First of all, we tell this to our parents all the time. The 13 plus age recommendation for social media has nothing to do with like cognitive or actual safeguards that these companies put in. It's simply because of COPA, which was a, at least in, in the United States, which is a law that says you cannot collect data from children. Yes. That's it. Um, but as you said, obviously many of these accounts for these kid influencers are managed by the parents. So yeah. somehow that becomes a loophole, right. To get around the, yeah. the, the rule. Um, so I'm really glad you you brought that up because it's technically against the terms of service, I suppose, right? Because kids aren't yeah. supposed to have accounts until they're they're 13. 100 percent. And they're making the assumption that all of the accounts are beneficial for the child or all parents have the best interest of the child at heart. And I have seen some of these accounts and that is not the case. The case is to exploit their children um, for financial gain, um, specifically when it comes to some young girls, um, as the New York times article recently stated, as well as the Washington post article, like there are parents who are knowingly exploiting their young daughters to predatory people online. Right. And the fact that that's allowed and that hasn't been shut down is still mind blowing to me. Yeah, I mean, one of the things we tell our parents all the time, because it's so overwhelming, all of this stuff is just whack-a-mole. You know, it's still <laughs> Wild West. Yeah. Like, it's like new issue comes up. Okay, let's try to solve it. But by the time we do, it's already done a lot of harm, right? So, mm-hmm. um, and then I also think, to your point about those recent articles that expose this um, industry, obviously, there are pa- plenty of parents that do know what they're doing and yes. are have no issues exploiting their kids online. But I do think there's a group of parents just that don't really know what they're doing, right? They think, yeah, okay, maybe it's okay for my kid to, I don't know, review a product for a toy company. And isn't that fun, you know? But they might not really know the implications of that for all the reasons that we yeah. talked about. So there is a spectrum, I think. Of, yes, there is a spectrum. You either don't know or you really know. Right? Yeah, like, I always say there's a spectrum and there's a lot of gray. There's yeah. a spectrum and there's a lot of gray. Um, it is kind of hard to be uh, black and white. Many people are. Many people are like kids don't belong on the internet, social media, period, right? Yeah. But I prefer to look at it as um, a spectrum and a gray. And my goal has always been to have these conversations and share different perspective in hopes parents can reflect on their own sharing practices yeah. and the content they are consuming um, and prioritize their child's right to privacy over their need to you know, share or for online popularity or for whatever it may be. Yeah, I mean, I tend to be an optimist in that I think um, many parents are just have good intentions, right? Like, I think yep. many of them just don't think about the implications of of what they're doing. Um, but it's it's hard to say, like, how many of each exist, right? So, well, I've said many, I've said many times that I don't think the majority of parents are sharing online with malicious intent. Yeah. I I don't believe that to be true. I believe that they are parents 
living in a world where we have normalized oversharing our children's image and life online, and therefore it feels normal. I get countless messages every day about, I just never thought of it like that. I never yeah. looked at it like that, like coming across your content was such a light bulb moment for mm -hmm. me, right? So sometimes all it takes is just hearing a different perspective and mm -hmm. having that light bulb moment and making a change right and hopefully it all leads to normalizing not sharing as much and giving yeah. our kids some privacy yeah to just be kids yeah yeah um okay so you've touched on this a little bit but i'd love for you to elaborate on ai which is obviously a mm -hmm. huge buzzword it's something everybody's talking about yes. everybody's worried about so how do you think ai has affected the current issues surrounding child safety and and charenting I think it's made it even more concerning. You know, I've seen some of these programs. I've seen easily downloadable apps where you can literally turn someone nude in yeah. a second. Um, I've heard stories about, you know, like uh, companies taking kids' faces without their knowledge and consent to build their programs and things mm -hmm. like that. Like Kashmir Hill's book, um, Your Face Belongs to Us, uh, talks about this. And I think it's really concerning. You know, I'm an adult. I consented to have my image online knowing yeah. the risks and the state of the world. These kids didn't, and we don't know what the future likes is like because it's all evolving so rapidly in front of our eyes so i would tend to try and take a safer approach and not share my child's image online because i don't know what the future is going to hold and i don't know how that's going to affect them it's truly unknown you know that's why i call myself mom uncharted because all this is uncharted territory there's yeah. no handbook on how to do this or how it all turns out but um personally i think ai as it relates to being a parent and sharing your kid online is pretty scary yeah i saw something recently there's a tool so let's say you you do the best practices you don't geotag you post later um <clears throat> there's something where you can uh it's it's an ai tool where you can find somebody's location by the coordinates have you seen this yeah so then there's that yeah, so too. yeah so, it makes yeah. So Caitlin, uh, Caitlin, she goes by the cybersecurity girl on okay, yeah. Instagram. Um, she, we collaborated on a video and she shared this program. It's not perfect because yeah. it's new, but with everybody really? using it, will it get better and better and better? Yep. And you can take like a photo and plug it in and it will give, you know, sometimes exact, sometimes general uh, coordinate. So even if you are a parent who is casually sharing online and um, publicly and taking a lot of photos in and around your house and your neighborhood and things like that, it looks like eventually these programs will be pretty, um, pretty good at finding out where your neighborhood is. Yeah. If someone was interested in finding out. Yeah. Um, and then, I mean, I think one thing that people underestimate too is what you mentioned with the creating of nudes. This is a huge yeah. problem for the older kids, like the tweens yes. and above. I mean, I'm sure you've heard the term sex, sexploitation, right? Where, you know, you used to have to make the mistake of sending a nude to somebody to be exploited, yep. right? By either another, you know, kid or somebody, a predator that's been grooming them. Now, all it takes is to have a few images of you available online. And those, those can be created, you know, by, yeah. by and it's not just stills now, they can create videos. We had a scan yes. scandal locally at a Beverly Hills middle school where middle school, middle school oh. made deep fake porn images of the other students and teachers. Of course they got expelled. But yeah. I do think of the um, psychological damage because regardless of, you know, you don't even have to make the mistake anymore of sending a nude, which, you know, I could see where, where kids, again, that don't have a fully full formed brain um, yeah. would make that mistake. Now, I mean, you, regardless of whether you did that or not, um, the shame, you know, as, as a kid, like it's fake. Yeah. But it's still shaming, incredibly shaming. Of course. I can't, I yeah. Can't 
So, um, you know, again, not to scare people, but this technology is here. Um, yes. It's working right now. And back to yes. your point about the the location one that maybe isn't perfect. In a few months, it will be, you know, and yes. these things will, will keep coming. So I think um, less is more is, uh, I think, the, obviously the safest approach, not just for actual safety, but, you know, mental health safety. I mean, there's Yes. We talk about both of these things all the time. They're related, but there's mental health implications of, of tech. And then there's actual safety implications of tech for kids. So yep. um, those practices pr protect both. Like you can't go wrong <laughs> by just not. Yeah, no. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. And um, that's kind of what I preach. And that's what I do. If I want to send a photo, I just text it or email it to friends and family and I'm fortunate that like none of my friends and family are over sharers or sharers anyway right yeah. you know I've never had to fight with my parents or my in-laws about sharing images online or anything like that we're kind of all we all we're either not tech savvy and couldn't do it anyway <laughs> or yeah. or we're just not those people so um yeah share share less uh go private be mindful of any information and images you're sharing of your children and just, you know, ask yourself before you post, why, yeah. why are you sharing this? You know, like, does it, is it benefiting my child now? Will it benefit them in the future? Um, what is the need I am feeling to share this with yeah. the world? Right. Yeah. Um, and I think if parents start reflecting on that, they'll realize that, and the reason why they're sharing is often coming from inside them and Absolutely. has little to do with their kids. I meant to drop this in there, but you know, this is my armchair theory, but I mean, I, I, it's absolutely supported by brain science. I do think there's a validation obviously on the, the parent side and they're getting little, little dopamine spikes every time yeah, somebody's yeah. liking, commenting, sharing, uh, commenting on their sharing posts. Right. So um, I think asking yourself, like you just said, is this just like a little cheap fix for me? And, you know, maybe I'm feeling a little bit empty or like I need some validation mm -hmm. or is it actually going to benefit my child is just like a really good check. So I think that's a good yes. rule of thumb. Um, well, Sarah, thank you so much for your time and everything you do. I love that you take such a clear stand on this. I, I think it's super brave. Um, but also you're giving people great information and tips, which is so, so needed um, in every niche, but especially this one, because we're talking about our kids' safety, their future, their mental health. So, um, so thank you again so much for everything you're doing. Awesome. I really appreciate it. And thank you for allowing me on your platform to further discuss these issues. So it's been great. Thank you so much.